Hi everyone and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith and in this video we're going to learn the two-player game Squadro, designed by Adrian Jimenez Pascal and published by Gigamic, who helps sponsor this video. Gigamic produces a line of games made up of high-quality wooden components like you'll find here. And if you'd like to see my other videos on some of their other games, you'll find those linked in the description below. But for now, join me at the table and let's learn how to play Squadro. To set up, place the game board in the center of the play area and put all five pieces of one color behind one of the printed lines and the pieces for the other color you'll put behind the other printed line. These pieces have a front and a back, so make sure they start with their fronts pointing towards the opposite side of the board. Have each player pick a color, either light or dark, and then they will control those five related pieces for the rest of the game. And that's the setup. In Squadro, starting with the person chosen randomly, players will take turns back and forth, picking one of their own pieces to move. And the object of the game is to be the first person to move four of their pieces to the opposite side of the board and back again. Sound easy? Well, it would be, except your opponent will be trying to stop you. So let's go back to the table and I'll show you in detail how this works. As I mentioned, on your turn, you'll pick any one of your colored pieces to move. Let's say I'm controlling these light pieces and I pick this one. That chosen piece then moves forward a number of spaces equal to the number of dots showing on its starting space. So in this case, it would move three. Now you must always go the full distance, unless something prevents you, as we'll see in a later example. Now the next player takes their turn and they do the same thing. Maybe they choose this piece, which moves two spaces forward. And you just go back and forth like this, picking any one of your five pieces to move. Let's say on my next turn, I decide to move this piece again. As we saw, it moves three spaces as indicated by the dots. Now, anytime a piece gets to the end of its row, known as the turnaround spot, it is turned around and stops, ending that player's turn, even if they would normally be allowed to move further. Now, when this piece is moved in the future, it will move a number of spaces equal to the dots showing on this side of the board, so only one space at a time from here on out. When a piece is traveled fully from one side and then back again to the other, you remove it from the board. And once four of your pieces have been removed in this way, then you win. So to summarize, you pick one of your pieces, see how far it can move based on the dots on its line, and then you move it. But there's a twist. Sometimes another player's piece will be in your way. If moving your piece would cause it to hop over one or more of an opponent's pieces, then you must end your move on the next empty space you get to. So for example, if I was moving this piece, which normally goes three spaces at a time, it first hops over this piece and then it stops. It won't go any further. However, each piece you pass over is then sent as far backwards as it can go. So in this case, back to the starting position. Now, if I had passed over this piece and it was facing in the other direction, then sending it backwards would move it back to the turnaround space. If your move would cause you to end on a space with an opponent's piece, you also hop over it to the next available spot. And again, the piece hopped over is sent backwards. And if this would cause it to hop over another piece, those pieces are not affected. It's even possible that a move would cause you to pass over several pieces at once, in which case, again, you stop on the next available space. And then all of those hopped over pieces are sent backwards in their respective directions. And so now you can probably start to see the twist of the game. It won't just be a simple matter of running from one side to the other and back again. You'll also need to pay attention for opportunities to hop over an opponent's pieces and to avoid being hopped over yourself. The game will continue back and forth with players taking turns until eventually one player has moved four of their pieces from one side of the board to the other and back again. And once this happens, they're declared the winner. And that's everything you need to know to play Squadro. If you have any questions though about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at BoardGameGeek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get a notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.